With me today is Ifeoluwa Dari Johnson. Uh, she's the founder and CEO of Ultraca. Uh, she is a biochemistry graduate of the University of Illinois. And uh, she also has an a, a MBA from the University of South Wales in the UK. Uh, in this video, uh, we're going to be talking about her journey, her career experience, uh, her challenges, how she founded Ultraca, and everything you need to know about Ultraca and how you, as my viewer, can uh, assess the platform of health tracker and other medical tests for yourself right from the platform of health tracker. So, if you are an aspiring co founder or you're already building something, this video is for you. Uh, don't hesitate to share with your network. Uh, like I would usually say, if you are in any position to share your resources or information with people, kindly share with them. Do not hold information. You never can tell what you're sharing with people and what change their life right so let's get down to the business of the day all right guys join me in welcoming Ifeoluwa Larry Johnson I've known Ifeoluwa from my days at Simla then back to uh, down to Petaka where I was supposed to work at some point I remember that story so if I, as a marketing expert from tech startup founder uh, how has the journey been so far right I mean how did you do that transition how did you do it cut off for me cut off for my career <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me to uh, this program, right? So, yeah, as you said, you know, I've been doing product marketing for like 10 years before this. Um, and I would say that, you know, that there are a lot of skills that are underrated, that are underrated as a marketer, right? Because, I mean, of course, I've worked with startups as well. I was not a key employee in my last <laughs> work, uh, place of work, um, and I've had to do products from was together with a company from my grandma, right? So I would say I had a bit of experience in growing companies, launching products, you know, and all of that. So um, I guess, it, of course, it was scary, right? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was scary to say, you know what, let's plunge into this, right? Because now there's, there's, there's no boss to go to. There's no guarantee. <laughs> there's no guarantee income, you know, and all of those, right? Yeah. So, you to get launched, but I would say that um, some of those skills I also, you know, owned over time became very, very, very important um, as you began to build the health tracker. Um, so I, I remember one, one of the reasons that I actually took the launch was I looked around and I felt, you know, there's nobody solving this problem. Um, and nobody's coming to save you. <laughs> nobody's coming to save us. I had a first time experience with losing someone I loved to, you know, uh, a situation where it could have been avoided if um, it is mainstream for testing done wrong, right? So uh, it just became more apparent, right? The first time I had the idea, you know, it was like a year before I started, and then one year after, especially the pandemic, nobody was doing anything about it, and I thought it was let's let's just get it on this time, this time, this time, right? Um, so that was it, um, and as, as they say. The rest is history. <laughs> of course, a lot of history is still being written, right? So, I would say there's no soul to be honest. <laughs> it is just getting enough courage, you know, uh, or be crazy enough to think that uh, you, you can actually do this in one way or the other, right? So, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's interesting to know that uh, health trainings can be good right from the comfort of our homes, right? And uh, I mean, Especially the fact that you don't need to go out there to heal at large at hospitals, great ridiculous long that sometimes it takes a natural result, right? Yeah. So but for you for health tracker, right? I mean the platform is making it easier for people to come to I mean take results, lab tests from their house and then get results instantly or sometimes to a for the lab, right? Yeah. So how do you guys do it? Do you do you have work with the lab or do you guys test in house at L tracker? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, to be clear, just in case there are <laughs> regulatory bodies here, no, we don't. <laughs> we don't <laughs> do any of this. We're not a lab. So, what we do is we work with lab partners okay. who, who process the samples, right? But where the, where the friction is or the problem that we're solving is that convenience bit, right? So, you want to do your tests, right? Um, but then, so let's just imagine you've not done any of your health tests this year. And not, not because you don't know that you should do it, but by the time you think about having to go to the hospital, they will not come back, you know, go 
go, you know, you just call me and say, you know what, I'm probably not going to die today, you know, so <laughs> I will be fine, <laughs> right? But then that's what leads to normally diagnosis of health issues. We really don't know the conditions that they have until it's almost too late, right? So, but if that can be done at home, uh, so which is where it works, where we come into, into the, the space, right? Um, you're able to book your test on healthtracker.com, and you have someone just knock on your door the next day and say, Hi, my name is Akudo, I'm from Healthtracker, I'm getting a sample. And that's it, right? Uh, from our end, we work with our partners to analyze the samples and to collect from uh, our customers, and then just get your results to you within 14 hours. That's, that's interesting. I mean, yeah, especially for the fact, knowing that Nigerians love uh, peace. Right. Uh, I remember during the pandemic, I never, yeah, the socks like, I never had any reason to leave my house. I was ordering food, I was ordering groceries, I was doing everything right from, I mean, I did step out of my house on Thomas and that has been the life most Nigerians, I mean, the elite, most, especially the elite are used to, right? So, but how much of an impact would you say health track has made so far? Yeah, I would say that um, there's a lot of people, at least part of our customers, who would never have done their tests. Or even know that they have some conditions if we didn't step into the space, right? Uh, we have people who who tell us, I have no idea that I had this, right? Um, and then now they're beginning to they on the program to get better from you know, just ensure that their health is on the right track as opposed to going down here, right? And to be honest, everybody <laughs> needs you to get their, their test done, right? Because it, 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 it can be shocking sometimes. In fact, some of the data that we have shows that. There is a crisis here. People need to know what's going on, right? Um, so that you can begin to look after your health. You don't want to get to 40, 50, after you've worked hard, you've, you're meant to be enjoying the fruit of your labor, and you know, enjoy your kids, watching them grow, and then you realize you have something that you could have taken care of when you were a lot younger, right? So uh, I would say that the impact has, has been humbling in a lot of ways, right? Because we, we've seen how things have been changing. Um, and then even just the time and cost savings, right? For people, makes it worth it for us that yeah, we're doing the right thing too. Well, um, I think um, knowing the fact that Nigerians, um, there is this culture of what you don't know to kill you, right? I mean, old tests, regular old tests, these are actually very important, and um, I think people should imbibe that culture. And thankfully, Ultra is here to solve that problem. Right. So, um, my next question is: With Nigeria's mobile um, penetration rate standing at around um, forty-eight point two percent as of January this year, right? Uh, would you agree that technology solutions in Nigeria are, are more accessible to a particular sector of the population, right? And, and if that is the case, how do you think we can solve that? How can we get more people, right, to adopt mobile technology, mobile digital technology? Yeah. I, I think that we we have done such a good job getting to this point, right? Considering that we we started late in the internet, <laughs> in the internet, in the Google uh, penetration thing. Uh, but again, we've seen that technology has accelerated that penetration over the past uh, few years, and it can only get better, right? Because the more people have access to uh, mobile technology, uh, to the internet, the more you know they're able to access a better life. Access to information and all of that. Um, and one of these we see all the time with my team is there's a time that before you can get any health information, you probably just need to speak to a doctor. Now you have the internet, but you yeah. put your yeah. doctor Google to check my name. If you feel anything, you probably will be right? So, <laughs> um, right? So, which means there's a lot more people who are not informed about what their health should look like, what its symptoms represent. Uh, and they're looking for a solution, right? So quickly, what we are doing is we are meeting people where they are. If you're online, if you're already online, yeah, we, we are online, right? We meet you there. And, and as more people go online, we meet you there as well. The other bit of it as well is technology is very inclusive, right? So if, I mean, that's why you have USSD and all of those, right? Just to ensure that we're not cutting out people who need it the most, right? So yeah, I, I think that you know, just the combination of exploring all the opportunities um, to reach more people is, is is just what we have to do uh, to to include you know, as much people as possible. Okay, so what what, what is your opinion about clicks in the Nigerian 
text space, right? Um, how how easy it is, how easy to see it is for people, especially women, to work in. So this this is quite the a tricky question, right? Because <laughs> I know that like there's been lots of lots and lots of discussion and debate around this. Okay. Um, what I would say is the first thing that everybody wants to do is come with as much value as possible. Um, and then it will be hard to ignore you, right? So and, and which is it. So my whole mantra has always been, I mean, if I'm bringing in the game, I'm bringing in, you know, and it's not just talk, right? People are seeing what you're doing, they're seeing your traction, they see your growth, you know, success has many friends and people will yeah, start to share yeah, themselves yeah. with you. Right. So I mean, and I know it can be delayed to gratification for most people because depending on what you're working on, they feel like, you know. But I would say the tech ecosystem is not as as clicky as at least not on my experience. Um, I think it is finding your own tribe, right? So I mean not everyone yeah. will be your friend, right? So, but if you can find your own tribe in that ecosystem, then your life will be a lot easier. Because, you know, whether you like it or not, we're not we all need each other. You really don't you need them to open some doors for you. They don't, I mean, the mistakes you should not have to make because it's you already made it, right? So, uh, a bit of effort and not feeling entitled. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. yeah, that was a day. Yeah, so because of that, like, ah, I'm a tech founder too. Yeah. Yeah. She just stopped like, that's, yeah, that's yeah, so that's cute. Like that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so you, you have to prove yourself what's the value, you know, and, all, and that can take a bit of time. Yeah. So before that happens, right, find your own tribe, the people who at least have to know you from where you're coming from, that believe in you. Um, and then it'll be easy because once people say, oh, okay, I mean, for this person to be associated with this person, right, that means there'll be something valuable here. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it becomes. So I, 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 again, maybe I'm just <laughs> very logical, right? So, but I would say that the, the the trick is find your tribe and then give her a go. You, nobody knows, yeah. Nobody knows. I don't, I don't be a pest. Exactly, right? And people have okay. I mean, everybody has for the you know, you have right. your life, right? That talk is hard. Right? <laughs> so, trust me, nobody's trying to ignore you. It is just hard. It is very you're you're juggling two thousand balls at the same time. Um, and it, it, it's crazy, right? It's it it crazy. <laughs> yeah, so talking about women in tech and, and in business, so for you as a woman in tech, um, do you think you get as much support for your brand compared to um, the other side of the gender? So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a, there's a you know, joke around how you have to, <laughs> <laughs> where you go now, you, you need to go in, you can't get of a white American <laughs> man, right? Because there's just something about you know being male and just being taken more seriously than we can in that sense, right? Um, but for in my own case, I, I think one of the things that made me very maybe not very easy, but slightly easier was I, I found quickly the tribe and found people who were invested in ensuring that women would find it easy in the ecosystem. Right. So I it wasn't totally like oh nobody was gonna speak to you because you're a woman, right? Uh, I found the likes of Cross Photo and Enoch on uh, from First Check Africa who believe in us it was on first check, right? So um, that made it a bit easier because I mean <laughs> it's like that chicken so okay, anybody will not fight you. <laughs> right? So they, they were like, no, you, you won't mess with that. <laughs> so but I mean, um, so a bit of that too, I would say is something that every one is trying to come into the ecosystem should, should find, which is which also ties to just finding your own tribe where people will believe in you from the one that are able because again everybody thinks that you need just a bit of support in the ecosystem. Um, so being a woman is tough. I promise you, people are gonna people are gonna take you less seriously, right? Because again, there are not as many women who are doing uh, great stuff in the ecosystem. Not because there are not women who want to. It's just that sometimes the system is not skilled to you know, to accommodate, yeah, and be friendly <laughs> to, to them. But I would say find your tribe um, and ensure that you know what create a good value that is clear that. This is this is this is good, right? Mm -hmm. She she knows what she's doing, and then it's clear that everybody wants to back you. Nice. Yeah. So um, let's talk about L Tracker, right? 
this. Technology has made our, our lives easier. And um, uh, I think instead of people focusing more on, uh, everyone focusing on FinTech, it's interesting to know that um, you, you chose to focus on health tech. Do you think there are more opportunities to explore in, um, in the area of health tech? Yeah, so I think that, I mean, the way I see it is, I, I think that for every uh, season, there is a, there's an industry <laughs> that is making the waves. I remember when it was e commerce, when it was the last junior, it was yeah. everybody yeah. was trying to get yeah. into e commerce yeah. and all. And they think and it was fit. <laughs> <guys, laughs> exactly. exactly. So um, I think that the next wave is health tech, right? Yeah. So, uh, and it's because sometimes you need those barriers to show that this can be done, right? Of course, we all know the problems in Africa is. In Africa, you know, it's just huge, right? But we have lots of problems that we need to solve infrastructure, um, just access, affordability. The problems are not ours, right? Uh, but then we also know that it's not something you can do alone, right? So as the ecosystem matures, people begin to see that it is possible to do uh, others. So I remember, if, I mean, a couple of people I spoke to when I was trying to launch uh, the tracker. Just imagine it, like, how we work, how we, you know, how we come to someone's home, right? And then I'll relate it to it. But there was a time where the fintech, uh, sorry, the financial services, it was, it was unheard of that you had a digital bank, there's no branch. <laughs> but how would I go? What if my money is missing? Where did you guys go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? It was inconceivable that like, yeah. nah, if nobody's going to buy that, nobody's going to go for it. You, know, you then have the likes of the US, um, who they buy, who have shown that that can work, Rappi, and all of that. I mean, people do not even know where their offices are, yeah. right? And then, in fact, you know, the big banks would say, before we can get money, we need to go in this area, go and set up a branch to acquire customers in those areas. But okay, time, times are changing. Um, so, and that's what I really strongly is that. The future of healthcare will have to be at home, right? Um, it has to be digital. That way, we can all maximize um, the opportunities in the healthcare system. Okay, yeah, so if I, as, as a tech startup founder, right, um, how easy was it for you to um, assess funding? And um, what, were there challenges? And what, what are the learnings? Yeah, so I mean, I started bootstrapping. Um, Thanks to my husband who allowed me <laughs> to <laughs> break it down for me. <laughs> what is bootstrapping for aspiring okay. startup founders? Yeah, so bootstrapping is you using you know your own money, right? Basically, so that means no outside capital, you just scraping all that you have, in savings, whatever that is, right? So for in my own case, it was all that I saved um, during <laughs> my past ten years of working, <laughs> right? So you, I mean, of course, to be honest, I have no idea why my husband. That <laughs> that money <laughs> was was just going to come back in one way, right? So, all well, the point was that was it. I was using my money, <laughs> uh, and then um, the first check was. I mean, of course, I had to put, put together my my pitch deck, and I was like, okay, you know, it's time to start to ask people to invest in the company, right? Because I already knew we already knew what we were going to. Uh, what, what we wanted to achieve and all, right? So, I would say it is difficult to raise money, no doubt, right? Uh, because, I mean, it's easier for me to say, oh, really, that sounds interesting, but maybe the money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put your money where your mouth is, right? So, which is where they work, especially at the early stage yeah. where your idea is not common yet. Uh, and for me, for Health Tracker, it was, it was a bit interesting because it, it, there was no body. And that was clear that I was doing this, who had been successful, you would say, well, at least we, we've seen it before, right? This kind of work, right? This is this is just that thing that, yeah, it could work. <laughs> so it was totally difficult. And again, it, what it sounds to be tech, right? So, and, you know, and also, um, and then there's a bit of idea around, or, oh, you know, Nigerians don't pay for healthcare, you know, how big can they get? Uh, so there's just like all those, you know, all those that you need to, to pass. But then, 
Um, one thing I've learned in fundraising is you need momentum. Just in that form, first person to be the video, and then once one person, yeah. it, you know, you just, know, just one, one year. Exactly, yeah. that more first one year that becomes a busy for others to look at your deck more deeply, and then once you start seeing this other person as can I see it as well, right? And then it becomes like oh, okay, I can see part of this as well, right? So, um, and I think for us that was <laughs> it means that there, right? The first check came, and then it was easy. It was easier for a lot more people to bet on us, um, and I just believe that yeah, there's something in here. Yeah. And then we our traction has proven them, <laughs> proven them right. Um, yeah. Thanks. All right, guys. So you heard it from the CEO and founder of El Tracker, a fellow at the region. And for me, I would say if you're so aim of going into tech startups and raising funds, you're wrong. You need to offer value. You need to build a scalable solution. You need to let what you are building and uh, ensure that what you are building is uh, a good access to, of course, the community, right? So, um, moving on to the next question, if let's talk um, marketing. Of course, we are marketing expert, right? So, what tool or strategy has been um, helpful in pushing the tracker out there? Especially knowing that I mean, this is something you are building from scratch. Yeah. So, um, for health tracker, from the beginning, I, I basically knew that I wanted traction. I wanted to prove the business model. I wanted, I wanted to get the product to the hands of people, right? So we we're very focused on customer acquisition from day one. Um, so from our first month, we were generating revenue, right? And it was, of course, everything we, we tried our hands on, a lot of things, and then settled on um, a bit of SEO, you know, very strong um, Google search and all of that, right? Because again, we already know what people. To search, to search for uh, matters related to that, um, to their health, right? So that was a very strong on our list. And then the other video we did is spread testing with Facebook ads, you know, and all that. Um, and then beyond that, one of our favorite work like magic. It was a day we discovered that somebody had done a pitch with a video. We didn't even know. Right. I like that track I went. So, of course, we were talking about their trip outside the country or so. Um, and then, you know, so they recorded the, the process. So the, 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 the team who came to take their sample are going for the COVID test, took the entire process. Oh, and then people were asking in the comment section, oh, how, how did this do this? Did this? Did this? <laughs> and they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, put the link and all. Because I just kept seeing people who came from, you know, YouTube, you know, Google Analytics will tell you where you know, the, the, the traffic is coming from. And like, who is there? So we had to go look for the person who put us on YouTube. So we had like very, and I think that's another thing that also has helped us is just to deliver a customer, great customer experience, right? Yeah. That people people would tell their friends about it, people would tell, you know, and I have to say that's one of the things that worked for us greatly. Um, it's just to be great operationally. Um, and then just ensuring that people know about us, right? So of course we're still early stage, there's a lot that we still need to do to get the word out there about what we do at Health Tracker. But well, yeah, I would say just being present when people are looking for us online and then delivering like any time. I think, I think, I think that matters a lot. The yeah. learning value and ensuring that your, your users are critical. So yeah, it's 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 there's no way they will tell what that's about. Exactly. Right. I remember when I was using, um, I was trying to solve online um, 2016 or so, Amazon. I would always talk about Amazon, right? <laughs> uh, great customer service, great customer experience. I mean, I needed a refund because they are not delivering the right on time. And these guys wasted on time, you know, refunding my money. And they still went ahead to deliver the product. And they told me, I mean, in case you get this product, don't hesitate to, to give it to a charity organization or whatever. I mean, their counterparts here in Nigeria will tell you no <laughs> refund, <laughs> no exchange, nothing, nothing. They'll put it in the planet, refund. Right, so customer experience, building great customer experience. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. So, so, totally, totally important. Um, and one of the things we also did very quickly was we, we, did, we ensured that we were delivering uh, the best product possible, right? The turnaround time, you know, and all of those. So, I mean, we have people who tell us, I mean, you guys are just amazing, how to make Zoom call, I just told them give a minute. Went to attend the first came back, just like I never even left, it even fail. It was less than five minutes of done. Um, and, all, and that makes us really happy, right? Because of course, that person will tell their friends about what we're doing at Tech Track. And so, yeah, I would say 
that and, and, and again that's what we focus on because you know how powerful that would be to, to attract it. So why would you say uh, was the peak very true moment for the track? <laughs> yeah, no. I promise you. Okay, well, no, no, no. So far, no, no. So I mean, uh, uh, there are there are plenty bigger than you. I'm saying, so far in this short journey, what would you say has been the breakthrough? Maybe not, maybe not. Where would you say has been the breakthrough moment? Yeah, I, I would say that it was sometimes around um, when when we delivered our first one thousand tests, right? So I think at that time, how many tests so far? We've done over 2,000 now. Oh, wow, that's huge. Something yeah. huge. <laughs> in just six months. It, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And we're really, really just grateful and proud that we get to do this. Right? So, at the point where we have done the 1,000 tests, we announced it. Um, and the number of people who choose, because it became it became proof that a 1,000 people got their tests done at all. Right, I would deliver it, right? So I, I think that triggered something and we got a lot more adopters. Because again, you know how it is, the first 100 is the hardest, the yeah. first 1,000, yeah. what are the first 10,000, right? But immediately the first 1,000 happened, um, we, we just saw that a lot more people decided to believe that, you know, there has to be this people are doing what you did, right? So I would say that, that eating that mark was very, was very instrumental for us. Okay, so let's talk about challenges. Uh Take startup founders face in Nigeria. I know, I know there are a couple of them. The resource, power, blah blah blah, human, human resource, and all of that. So, I mean, what are the challenges you faced? Um, especially, I mean, how do you combine your startup work with, uh, especially being a model of two? I mean, how do you cope? So, uh, I will start from the first one. The challenges are. Definitely numerous, right? Again, this is Nigeria. We know <laughs> we know what's going on, right? If you think about power, you know, you just think about you know, internet, right? Yeah. Just having the internet, right? Um, and then the logistics of ensuring, you know, being able to predict traffic, with somebody at home, you know, just waiting to get a test done, right? So we've had to become experts. Right, in just a short amount of time, be very good at good planning and all of those, right? But uh, it, it, it was challenging at the beginning, of course, we were still working through all the challenges to make sure that we deliver as much as possible to our customers, right? But, um, and then, with, of course, there's hiring as well, you know, how finding the right talents, <laughs> yeah, right, would be, you know, and all of those. So, it, it is challenging, uh, but then I would say it is worth it as well because we can see the results of the impact of what we're doing. So, it makes us do confidence when you say, yeah, yeah, let's, let's go be crazy right again <laughs> today. So, yeah. Um, and then, for me, combining both, um, I'll tell you, it's easy to roll a coaster. There are days I look at myself and I'm like, no, you're not, you're not a good mother to stay. <laughs> um, I mean, I have a six year old and a three year old. Um, they, they need their money. <laughs> so I tell them, I have a new baby, right? So they are free of it. They need their pay. It's their tractor, that's the baby. So you have to get them to learn to coexist in the same house. I suppose you're not. Exactly. <laughs> so um, it's just that. They try to say, oh, okay, I see, I understand, because we have to give that time as well, you know. So, but it, it, it is tough, you, you have, and it can be like where I was there, are days you know you have to show that you're there with your family. And then there are days you're like, you know what, you just, you just need to move as it goes. <laughs> right, so, uh, but yeah, every day we get up and do it again. Um, sometimes I intentionally just go for school runs so that my kids can see me every day. You know, and all of that. And of course, I mean, even my husband as well, just ensuring that we balance that. Yeah. But I guess, I mean, again, sometimes it's, it's, the sacrifice has to, you just have to, you have to make that sacrifice and uh, ensure that the whole family is on the page or the same page with you, know, right? Because I think they all see it, they see what they're what doing, yeah, it's, it's, it's our success. <laughs> right? yeah. 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 So let's talk about uh, adoption of health tracker. So, uh, what has the reception been like, especially with regards to the health partners? I mean, the, the lab laboratories. I mean, 
were they at any point, I mean, was any one of them at any point uh, threatened? Did they feel threatened like that? This person, these people are going to take our job and all that. Of, of course, some of them might not realize partnership uh, is actually what uh, makes the work easier, right? Yeah. Like, what was it like for them? Yeah, I would say that um, finding the right partner, right partner is super, super important. People mm -hmm. who understand and see the and, and get the vision in that sense, right? Because again, it's going to be a long journey <laughs> with them, right? So, um, so at the beginning, the work was you know just finding that right partner, right? The right partners both on operation side, social plan. Um, they are able to give uh, the kind of uh, the kind of speech that we want, yes, right? Because I mean, we're obsessed about customizing as, as I mentioned before, you know. So um, I would say that it, it, it was a bit of finding level, right? And then we found <laughs> so, uh, and then you know, uh, because again, every partnership has to be win-win. Yeah. If yeah. it is clear to them how they're going to win, then they're going to partner with you, right? So. Um, also, I would say that my background in diagnostic space also helps because, of course, uh, I've done this and I know, you know the, some of the, the owners of, the, of this uh, laboratories as well. So it helped a bit because, I mean, if you know my track record, you will know that if I say I will deliver, I will deliver, but at least I've tried my best <laughs> to deliver. Right? So I, I would say a bit of that would help and also ensuring that you deliver your yeah. I mean, I remember when um, fintechs came, I mean, they needed to collaborate and partner with banks. Sometimes some banks saw them as threats. And I mean, I'm glad that at the end of the day, uh, most of the banks have woken up to that um, reality that these guys, I mean, they need each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so collaboration is almost inevitable. Yeah. Yeah, so, so what, what is the future like? And what is the future for the tracker? Next two years, five years, ten years. What what is it like? What what is your vision? Yeah, I mean the vision scares me sometimes to be honest, <laughs> right? Because yeah, it's good, yeah, it's good yeah. right? So we, and, and it's because we truly believe that uh, millions of Africans can get their test done at home, and that will change the way healthcare is done currently. It's basically the future of healthcare that we're building here, um, and then the future of healthcare will become very interdriven precision medicine, personalized um, healthcare, um, and basically just um, with owning your health data over time, you know, it just becomes a lot more, um, we're basically changing the game basically when it comes to um, healthcare in Africa. Um, beyond that as well, we're an African focused company, right, so we launched in Nigeria, uh, but then we're, we definitely want to go into Ghana and Kenya over the next um, couple of years, um, South Africa, uh, and all. Again, we already have some solid partnerships in place in those uh, countries already. It's just you know getting getting ready to crack the market <laughs> in that sense. So um, we want to we want we want to go around Africa. We want to we want to bring the lab to everybody who's just in, in Africa. Um, and beyond that as well, um, we know that and that's what we tell ourselves every day. Uh, myself and the team at El Tracker, which is we can we want to have 10 more years to lives of people in Africa, right? So just imagine that if you already know today that you have high cholesterol, right? Maybe that will be with up over the next 10 years if you can do anything about this, right? Or the next 20 years. But then because you now know, um, and then you keep doing your tests, you change your lifestyle, you you know, we're doing condition management for you. Um, you can live well into your 70s, into your 80s, into your 90s, just because you know, you're taking care of yourself. Uh, and we take, we, take, we take our jobs very seriously. <laughs> because we, we know that a lot more people it, will, will live longer, live healthier, uh, just because we're doing what we're doing. Right? So, yeah, the future is definitely, again, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Ife. So, um, in rounding up, uh, any word of advice for aspiring tech startup founders in Africa? So my advice would be get started, right? It is tough to start, right? So yeah, and another I mean, and that would go in line with don't be so on guard with perfecting your tech, right? Because sometimes we you know, we, 
we get very into oh I need this to work well, I need to this to be perfect, that you don't actually get to have customers actually using that product, right? Because that's where you get the feedback very quickly. Um, so my advice is launch as quickly as possible and keep it waiting because that's where you get the real customer feedback. Yeah. Um, you know, waiting for a product to be perfect and all that, yeah, can you can take the lead. <laughs> just start. Yeah, just start. Get get started and because those feedback will help you. It will help you become a better entrepreneur, it will help you to, to have a better product in the process. All right, so um, thank you so much. So on, on a lighter note, right, um, Microsoft Teams or Slack? I think you asked for Slack. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, never, I'm not sure I've ever intentionally used Microsoft Teams. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, 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 I've, I've, used, I've used the Teams for a couple of weeks and I've been sharing it with me. Yeah. I think I'm the first one also. Yeah, I think Slack is just enough for collaborating, right? So yeah. it's easy to. So just get on it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so um, Google Meets or Zoom for meetings? Mm, that's not. <laughs> I'll say Google Meets because it's easier. Yeah. Yeah, because you work, that's it. Like if you have a Google Calendar, you're going to have done. And the, the, the ability for it to you can easily sync it to Google. Exactly, yeah. calendar. Yeah, so that's, that's a lot easier. All right, Jeffrey, thank you so much uh, for doing this with me. Uh, I hope you guys have, uh, well, have had a, a nice time so far. You've learned one or two things from the founder and CEO of Ultracker. And please don't just watch this video. Please patronize Ultracker when you're traveling yes. next, going out of the country, or you want to do your regular health check, please, ultracker.com, or download the app on Google Play Store or Apple Store. And um, also share this video with people within your network. Uh, let them learn from the co-founder and CEO of Ultracker how to build a tech startup from scratch. Thank you guys and I'll see you again in the next video.